In this video, we're going to go over the various ways that LowNet translates data into forms other systems can use. So specifically, we're going to be talking about LiveLink and FreeD. So before we get started, make sure you have the latest version of LowNet server and also the latest version of the Unreal plugin if you are using Unreal. So we're going to go over LiveLink first. The first thing you're going to do is make sure it's installed, which you can do just like any other Unreal plugin. And then in Unreal, you just need to make sure that you can see plugin content here. And just for now, go ahead and find the low net client content folder. We'll use this in a second. We're going to go into Live Link and we're going to add a low lead Live Link source. And I'm just going to type in the IP that I want to use here and the port that I want to use. So now we're connected and receiving. Now in low net, you can see we have uh, an encoder that is automatically connected. We're going to go ahead and click Settings, and in LiveLink, enable LiveLink. Type in the IP address that you want to send the data to, and the port that you want to send it over. Go ahead and open it up. Now, if I rotate the encoder right now, we'll notice that two objects pop up. You have two sources here. You have a basic and a camera source. So the basic source is there so you can use the data coming in how you'd like. You're not limited to the camera roll. You can use it for whatever you want in any way you want, and we'll get on that in a second. The basic source also is the only way to get the raw encoder values through LiveLink. Now the camera source works a little bit differently. It's easier to set up, but it's a little bit more limiting in what you can do. So you'll notice as I go into the frame data here um, and I rotate the encoder that nothing's changing. Now that's because of the fact that we have not yet assigned a lens map to this encoder. So we'll go ahead and do that. We just assign a map here. I'll go uh, the focus there. So now, as I change, you'll notice that the focus distance does update. So the camera source is looking for which slot the encoder is in to determine which value to use. So it expects that focus will always be in slot one, iris will always be in slot two, and zoom will always be in slot three. If we were to change this to, say, A2, and assign it a different map, now, as we rotate this, you'll see that it's coming in on the aperture. And that's just because it's in the second slot, which is obviously wrong. So we're gonna go ahead and just reassign this back to the first slot. Now, anytime an encoder sends a packet of information, the corresponding camera is made available or updated in Unreal. So you can see here, we've assigned an encoder to A, and so we're only getting the A camera objects. But if we were to assign this to B, rotate a little bit, now you can see that data is coming in on the B objects. So here's how you can use this information. So we're gonna go ahead and go to our live, our LowNet client content folder, and we'll just add in a basic live link camera. Over here in the details panel, make sure that this is set to the camera you wanna use, so A cam, and make sure that this is set to the camera component. You'll also wanna make sure that you turn off world transform and all of these as well, because we're not passing in any transform data only lens data, we don't want any of this to update. Now if we go back to the camera and we rotate this, you can see that the focus distance is updating with the physically correct lens values as I rotate the encoder. Pretty cool, right? Now if we wanted this to be a zoom, we could simply uh, set this to A3 and we can go ahead and just select a zoom map if we wanted to, so here's a zoom map. And now, as we rotate this, we'll notice that the focal length is changing. Now, if you want a little bit more flexibility, you can use this Live Link Camera Tweakable object. When you bring this in, you'll likely will have to go into the blueprint, and you may have to delete and re-add this node to get it to refresh with your correct IP address. Um, that's just something to note. But on this, you'll notice that we have this settings map that allows us to choose which encoder and which slot is assigned to which lens parameter. So now you can see that we're getting a very similar result as before because the encoder slots are mapped the same way that they are on the camera. But if we change uh, focus to also use encoder three, now the focal length and the focus are updating on the same encoder. Obviously, this is not what you would ever do, but for demonstration purposes, it shows what this blueprint is capable of. Now, there's one other thing to consider here, which is that by using this, we actually still have access to the raw encoder values, which we can use for things that aren't camera lenses. So if I open up the blueprint editor, I'm just gonna go ahead and bypass all of the camera settings for now. 
if we had a cube, um, and then I go ahead and just set a world rotation, for, for instance, um, I can get the property value. Um, I'm going to get a ref here. I'm going to get the property value here for three, which would be the first raw encoder value. So I'm going to go ahead and reassign this back to A1 to get that value. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, make a new rotator here. Make a rotator. And we'll go ahead and just keep that on the roll. And then we'll do this. And then if we just plug that in now, and you can see as I rotate the encoder, the cube is rotating to match. So in this way, you can actually use the encoders for things that aren't cameras. You can use them for just arbitrary pieces of equipment or props in your scenes. Okay, so the next protocol we're gonna cover is FreeD. FreeD is used by several different companies for a lot of different things, and a lot of media server software supports them like Disguise and Eximetry. To enable it, we're gonna go into Settings, FreeD. We're gonna go ahead and enable FreeD. And we're just gonna define an ID, we'll just say one. This can be any numeric value, and you can have up to four of them. Now, FreeD only supports zoom and focus settings. It doesn't support any aperture settings. But here in Lonet, we can define any encoder we want for any ID. And you can even assign one encoder multiple times if you want for some reason. So in this case, we're just gonna go ahead and assign this one, and we'll go ahead and assign A1 for zoom there. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to enter in the IP that we want to transmit on and we're also going to open that port. So what's going to happen here is anytime an encoder that you've assigned in this window sends an update, it's going to be attached to a packet with the camera ID that you've chosen uh, and then sent along through the IP and port that you've chosen to whatever's receiving it. So for example, if we go into disguise and we've configured our automation settings to use a 3D source, and we pointed that to the port that we just selected. Uh, I've created a camera and I've simply said that all the data coming in uh, through the 3D1 zoom is going to be sent to the focal length in millimeters of that camera. And now as I rotate it, you can see that indeed the focal length is being updated. Now we're getting crazy values here because of a checkbox that was back in Lonet. So here we have the use raw encoder value setting. Now, if this is checked, it's going to send the raw encoder data instead of the mapped data. If we uncheck that, it's now going to utilize the lens map that we've selected. So if we go back to, into disguise, and now as we rotate, we can see that we're getting far more sensible focal lengths that are coming through. Now, there's one other thing to consider here, which is that we also have this packet injection option. So this is useful if you have a camera tracking system, for example, that sends out its own 3D data. What you can do is you can point that system to the server that's running LowNet through the port that you select. When it gets a 3D packet, it's gonna to check to see if the ID of that packet matches an ID that you've selected. And if it does, it'll add the encoder value that you selected to that packet and then pass it along to the server that you opened up here. And that way, the receiving system isn't getting two pieces of information that are conflicting. Because if it was only getting the data from low net, it would have encoder data, but no positional data. And if it was getting the, the data from the tracking system, it would be getting positional data, but no encoder data. So packet injection allows you to merge those two together, so you get clean data the whole way through.